class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the Sharps development camp scrimmage that occurred today. And while this isn't a type of game that you're going to be able to draw a ton of meaningful conclusions from, it was still a bit of a fun opportunity here to see and put into practice what these players may have learned over the last couple of days during development camp. The organization pitting them against each other, trying to ignite that competitive drive, certainly, that exists in all of these players. But at the same time, these are guys who have been getting to know each other, hanging out, they're technically teammates and so you're not expecting much of a playoff like atmosphere to this game either there's no physicality nobody wants to hurt each other or injure each other and so generally it's not very close to an NHL game but it's the only real hockey action that we're probably going to get until mid-September for the rookie face-off tournament so it certainly bears talking about anyway and considering it includes prospects it's quite fun to mention as well having said that though because it's not a very serious game very open very run and gun four on four three on three this isn't a type of game where you're going to be able to say, well, just because this guy had a great scrimmage means that his name is jumping up the depth charts. And in a similar vein, just because someone had a bad scrimmage doesn't necessarily mean their name is falling down the depth charts either. So to jump into the first player to talk about, we have the duo of Will Smith and Quinton Musty. While I will talk about them individually, the reason I put them together is because they were so successful as a duo here today. And I imagine in three years now, the San Jose Sharks are going to be hopeful that it's going to be Will Smith feeding Quinton Musty. And into the future, you know, 10 years, 15 years on the San Jose Sharks team as a whole. And Will Smith outstanding performance probably the best player on the ice for both team teal or team white uh one of the major questions for will smith coming into this season going into the nhl is how he would adjust without his two common line mates of gabe perot and ryan leonard the two players he had been playing with for pretty much the majority of the last two seasons for himself and yet paired with quinton musty here someone who he's only been with for a couple of days hasn't really had a chance to develop any chemistry with it feels as though these types of these two players have known each other for years with how much they were able able to connect on the ice and so I don't think it's going to be much of an issue issue for Will Smith at the NHL level playing away from those two guys he had been with his two line mates consistently because Will Smith is just that overwhelmingly good in terms of his elite offensive sense. And we saw that on full display here tonight, early, early, or today, I should say, early, early on in this game, he picks off a pass from Team White's goaltender to feed Quinton Musty in front, reading that play perfectly well. His elite playmaking got to be shown off multiple times throughout this game, even had a nice, solid defensive play, breaking up a two-on-one in the middle parts of this game as well. Smith, a lot of less pressure on him last Last year, he was the guy here at the development camp as that fourth overall. This year, it is Macklin Celebrini, so he's able to play with a lot more freedom, a lot less burden on him, a lot less pressure generally. Just go out there, have some fun, and he had a ton of fun, clearly, because he was, indeed, like I said, the best player on the ice. When it comes to Quinton Musty, we got to see how he was able to dominate at the OHL level this past season, just heavily able to use his size to protect the puck in the offensive zone. There was basically no player for the 14. White, who was actually able to assert themselves over Quinton Musty, just basically skating circles around people. Good shot for himself, but also some pretty underrated playmaking, just as much as Will Smith was able to catch him with some great passes, Musty was able to respond in kind as well. So while he was a small step below Will Smith, I would say in this game, still playing at a very, very high level. And like I said, this is the type of duo that the Sharks will be hoping that is on the San Jose Sharks team in just two to three years time. And while I don't think Musty will be a factor for the Sharks for this upcoming year, considering who the Sharks have brought in this past offseason in the year after that, there's a very real shot of him being able to make the team and perhaps maybe knots out an outside shot of him getting nine game look this season before the entry level contract gets fully into effect. And then we get to Macklin Celebrini, him being on Team White. The major spotlight was on him. Top prospect for the San Jose Sharks, first overall pick just a few days ago. So pretty quick turnaround here for Celebrini. And it was a bit of a slow start in this game. Uh, at first, primarily because he wasn't really getting much ice time for the first few minutes. But then as he got more and more shifts, a bit of a... It took some time to really get up to game speed, I guess you could say. Overforcing in a lot of certain situations. One could argue that maybe those over force plays would have worked at a higher level of play he put a bit too much on certain passes a bit too much sauce on a saucer pass 
podcasts are reading a bit too much into a particular play and so these things didn't really work out but as the game wore on Celebrini got better and better and better to the point where at the end of it he was basically just controlling the pace in the offensive zone basically doing whatever he really wanted to drawing a ton of pressure towards him and yet being able to outplay that pressure very very easily he was the major reason for how Team White was actually able to tie this game at the end 7-7 if not for Celebrini that game probably ends without the or I mean the shootout probably gets played anyway but at least it doesn't end in a 7-7 situation Celebrini very very good right at the end putting his skill on full display there and so while it was that slow start slightly disappointing and so Will Smith gets the title as best player on the ice Celebrini still got to show off a lot here today when it comes to Sam Dickinson it's a bit of a tough spot for Dickinson he's the type of player who excels from a defensive standpoint as well a lot of his strengths as a player is defensively and physically as well but here tonight like or today like I mentioned there wasn't really much of a defensive game there was no systems put in place it's very run and gun and on top of that there wasn't really any physicality so there were multiple times where you could have definitely seen Dickinson be able to shut down a play if he was going to lay the body on somebody on team white but because he was specifically avoiding that it kind of made him look a bit worse than he actually is so I won't fault him defensively for anything Where I will fault him somewhat is offensively, while he might not have had the same level of offensive pedigree as a Zane Parrick or a Zeev Bouyam, the player who could have been taken at him uh, instead of him at 11th overall, he did come with some offensive talent, was over a point per game in the OHL with the London Knights this past season, so you were expecting a certain level of creativity, and while he had the speed to be able to put himself in good situations, it felt as though a lot of the times he wasn't really able to make much happen. So defensively, I'm not going to fault him on anything here that happened tonight uh, today, but offensively, definitely could have been hoping to see a bit more from him as the 11th overall selection. When it comes to Casper Haltunen, a teammate of of Sam Dickinson as we know in every single time that we see Hal Toon and the major skill of his that is the thing to watch is his shot and in this development scrimmage it was no different his shot was again the big standout for Hal Toon in, in terms of his performance and the major question as we move on for the rest you know next season and into the future for Hal Toon is whether or not the other aspects of his game can hold up enough at the NHL level where he can use that shot to become an effective 30 plus goal scorer at the highest level. If he's able to do that, he could become a very, very good prospect for the San Jose Sharks. And we saw, like with Celebrini, it was a slow start, didn't really do much at the start of it, had some struggles in the middle part, but as it wore on, he really got to pick up the pace. Good shot, beat the goaltender multiple times, very, very nice, and just generally high up there on the depth charts the player who probably started the year with not a ton of hype behind him but now finishes as a pretty high up on the depth charts player for the Sharks and so someone who a lot of fans were keeping an eye on here in this scrimmage and then we get to Eric Pole camp, a bit of a dark horse this past season. He was playing in the NCAA, but maybe not for one of the more talked about teams in that particular league. Had a decent year, but he'll be heading to the University of Denver next season, the defending NCAA champion. So he's definitely going to be able to have a bit of a bigger main stage performance. And he was very good in this scrimmage, likely the best defenseman amongst both teams. His offensive talents were on full display, which is interesting because when Pole camp was originally drafted, he wasn't necessarily viewed as much of an offensive defenseman more of a defensive defensive guy had like I said an okay year in the NCAA this season played some for the world junior championship winning United States team as well at the under 20s uh, back in January and just generally it's hopeful that he'll be able to take a big step forward this next season with the university in Denver and perhaps especially when you consider the fact that Pole Camp is one of the rare right-handed defensemen for the Sharks in their system perhaps at the end of next season he might sign an NHL contract with the Sharks and we could see him for a few games by the end of it if this scrimmage is any indication of what the type of player we are going to see from pole camp over the next few months that could actually has an okay chance of occurring then when we get to some of the other players these are the players who uh didn't necessarily have a huge spotlight on them but perhaps still performed very very well uh philip Bistet, i thought 
like with much of Team White, had a slow start but really picked it up as the game wore on. He's going to be an interesting player to watch as he gets a full season in the AHL. David Edstrom, a player who Sharks fans might not be super familiar with due to the fact that he was only picked up a few months ago in the Tomas Hurdle trade. He played in the SHL this next season. He's going to be playing in the SHL for the upcoming year as well. He showed off some decent capabilities for Team Teal, so he's becoming a bit of a promising prospect for the San Jose Sharks as well. Uh, Luca Cagnoni was slightly disappointing for sure. One of the big criticisms for him as a player is whether or not he'll actually be able to adjust to the NHL size in the future as a relatively undersized defenseman, but you would think that in a situation here where there's a ton of open ice, he doesn't have to deal with that obstacle. He would have been on full display with some offensive talent, and yet he was relatively invisible, not really getting to do much of anything, so that was definitely a bit disappointing, but generally, I thought it was a very fun development scrimmage. It's quite clear that the level of play at this scrimmage is significantly higher than let's say three years ago for the San Jose Sharks as the prospect cupboards have been constantly filled with really really strong talent over these last couple of drafts and so while the San Jose Sharks will have a big impact coming next season with players like Celebrini expected to join the team and Will Smith going to be joining the team it is going to be over really the next three to four years where we start to see a lot of these names fill in and see how that makes up the future of the San Jose Sharks but the future right now is looking pretty bright class dismissed